Yeah, we're going to talk some cricket now on the Sports Max Zone. Today, we continue to assess the inexperienced West Indies squad named for the test leg of their all format tour of Australia in January and February 2024. The 15-man unit includes seven uncapped players to be captained by Craig Brathwaite, with Alzara Joseph named as a new vice captain. Let's have a quick look at the full squad. Craig Brathwaite, captain, Joseph, vice captain, Tej Narayan Chandapal, Kirk McKenzie, Alec Athanase, Kavim Hodge, Justin Graves, Joshua De Silva, Akeem Jordan, Gurikish Moti, Kimar Roach, Kevin Sinclair, Tevin Imlak, Shamar Joseph, and Zachary McCaskey. As we outlined on Wednesday, Jason Holder and Kyle Mears declined selection as they prioritize the T20 format, while Jaden Seals is out injured. And at a press conference following our segment on Wednesday, lead selector Desmond Haynes revealed that Darren Bravo and Shea Hope were also contacted. He says Bravo told director of cricket Miles Bascom that he remains on a break while Hope says he wants more red ball practice. Let's turn to Joseph Reds Pereira for some analysis. Red, some. let me offer my personal congratulations to your honorary doctorate that you received from the University of Guyana. Um, uh, Mariah and uh, Ricardo, I'm sure, would have said that. I was on vacation at the time. So well-deserved, Reds, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, you know, you, you concentrate on your life work and whatever happens, well, you, you, you're humble and you're grateful. Yeah. Well, the, the life work of some of our West Indies cricketers under the microscope at the moment, because some of them are unavailable for this series. And uh, we have a squad going to Australia that's very, very short on experience, Reds. How does the fact that seven uncapped players are in this squad grab you? Well, Lance, if you look at uh, what is maybe uh, a new guard, um, there, there is no Oricon, Gabriel, Brooke. Wood, Chase, um, Bonner, Reefer, Karaya. And of course, we've had a situation with Holder and uh, Mayors um, uh, making themselves unavailable. And that's virtually a team um, which I think the West Indies selectors have, have, have moved away from. And based on the performance of the West Indies A team in South Africa, um, and I had sent you an initial lineup which indicated that, uh, that the selectors have virtually gone for those players uh, for, from the A team who had had two good A tours before. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, you could say that despite the um, great Australian team they're facing, they have chosen this tour because of, of, of the players they have who are saying, yes, I'd like to go. They're investing here for, for the future. Yeah. A, a quick comment on Darren Bravo, Reds, because um, on the show yesterday, we had suggested that it was shocking that he wasn't picked, but we were not aware at the time that he was, he was approached. What are your thoughts on his um, declining the invitation to the squad? Well, I can well understand it. I think the whole, the whole is issue was badly handled after not being picked in, in the series against England yes. because he was 34, and then you picked other people who are older than him, to all of a sudden now looking to try and put together a squad with some experience, there's not a lot. Um, you know, he got this call, I think, from Miles Bascom, and I'm not surprised that he's, he, 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 he said, look, you know, I, I'm not available, I'm still having a break, I mean, psychologically, mentally, physically, cricket-wise, he probably wasn't ready at all. So I think that was badly handled. Yeah. Or, Reds, you just alluded to the fact that some of the players getting an opportunity here showed potential in A-team tours, which is the platform for selectors to identify players with talent. But as we had said at the top of the show, they are going to Australia now with a job that a lot of more experienced players in the past have, have failed to pass those examinations. Um, is this then a series that 
the team will be looking to gather some experience and, and know-how and not so much focus on, on winning. We know winning is important, but is it that the selection panel feels that, OK, we may not be able to win this series, but let's see what these players have? Yes, I think that's a, a, that's a fair assessment. And I think maybe looking at uh, the tour to England, where you know they can use whatever happens in Australia, uh, experience, good performances, confidence, uh, players, uh, building uh, a test career. Uh, and I'm told, I'm told by one player, in fact, I, I can say I spoke to young Joseph from Guyana, and he said Sean Tate um, was very helpful to the side in, in South Africa. And he said Jimmy Adams also played a very good role. So I think the, the, the backroom staff, and there's a chance after I saw um, the president, President Shallow, uh, naming Brian Lara as a mentor. Well, why not get Brian Lara up there so he can further assist uh, Jimmy Adams about conditions in Australia, uh, about the kind of pitches in Adelaide and Brisbane. Um, you know, I think we need to spend the extra dollar and have the extra personality. Yeah, Red, you know, I have so much to say on this issue. What I'm going to take you up on today, though, is the contradictory explanations that have been coming from the lead selector, uh, Desmond Haynes, in relation to a number of these selections. First of all, great to hear that Darren Bravo was approached. Um, again, I completely agree with you because I think that situation was handled so poorly from the get-go that you cannot blame Darren Bravo for saying, well, no. That's fine. I'll sit this one out um, because the worst thing you want to do is to go to Australia not being in the right frame of mind. And then if you perform poorly, that's going to be all on you. Mind you, it's a risk because he may never be given the opportunity again, but a risk he was clearly willing to take. Here is where I am, though, Reds. When the squad was released yesterday... Part of what was said by Cricket West Indies and Desmond Haynes, the lead selector, it was pointed out clearly that Jason Holder and Carl Mayers declined selection. They want to prioritize T20 international cricket. I want to deal with Carl Mayers specifically because this is a man who in four test matches for the West Indies in 2023 is averaging just 20. I have a graphic, Reds, that I want to look at the top batsmen in test cricket for the West Indies in 2023. Now, mind you, it is absolutely nothing special. So I'm not suggesting that any of these players um, is the solution to the problems that we currently have in West Indies cricket. In terms of average, that list is led by Tej Narayan Chandapal. In terms of run scored, it is led by Craig Brathwaite. On this list is Jermaine Blackwood in 11 innings, six test matches. He's averaging 26.9. Jermaine Blackwood in this hugely inexperienced squad is dropped, although he is the third best scorer for the West Indies in 2023. But Carl Mayers, who averages a mere 20, whose highest score is 30 in the Kalinda year, was given a call, and he was the one who had to decline. Jermaine Blackwood's career average, um, test career average, is around where the men who are replacing him, Justin Graves, Kave March, Tevin Imlak, Zachary McCaskey, are averaging in their first-class careers, not their test average now. They all went on a tour of South Africa A recently. All of these players averaged just 30 or below in that South Africa A tour. So explain to me now, Reds, given all that logic as to why German Blackwood would at least not get the opportunity to go to Australia. Say she Hope has declined. Um, Mayors <laughs> has declined. Um, but Blackwood has experience. He was your recent vice captain. He hasn't been terrible by West Indies standards this year. Why does he get dropped? 
Well, I didn't have, and I mean, want to be very honest with you, I didn't have Blackfoot in, in, in my side. I never had mares in my side based on performance and some of the figures that you, you pointed out. But um, you are making a, a solid point that um, with the shortness of experience, and that is why they try to rope in Bravo uh, at the end, um, you know, a close friend of mine who, who played for the Leewards, he was um, standby um, for West Indies in, in 1983, uh, Leewards fast bowler. He said he was the, he's the one batsman who will attempt to try and attack uh, the Australian uh, bowlers. And uh, w w when you look at, at the overall needs, um, there should have been uh, s some c consideration uh, for Blackwood. Uh, there was um, some early indicators that um, all was not ha happy with him. And hence, um, uh, Ricardo, there was no contract offered. Was that an indicator to you that he was a borderline pick? <laughs> uh, listen, it might have been, you know, Reds, but the point I'm making is given all the prevailing circumstances, when you sit to select that final squad. And here is what makes matters worse now, because I understand that at yesterday's press conference, Desmond Ains was asked whether Jermaine Blackwood had been advised that he would be dropped. And the response to that was that he owes Jermaine Blackwood a call. If that is true, then it seems to me we're making the same mistake that we made with Darren Bravo, no with Jermaine Blackwood. Because in my opinion, once this decision is made as your former vice captain, you should be calling Jermaine Blackwood, you should be having a conversation with him, and he should be fully aware of what is about to happen before he hears it in the media or before the squad is released and he is seeing it for the first time. So if that call did not go to Jermaine Blackwood, it makes this situation even more disappointing. Ricardo, over the years, you can add many names. Uh, we aren't going to uh, go into that in, in, in greater name detail. But one of the fundamental things and I remember talking to Michael Fidley uh, when he was chairman. He says, as soon as it was necessary um, to make a call to any uh, players who were part of the squad, you make sure you call that player and uh, tell him um, as best as you could uh, that he is not being selected. I think it's a a fundamental uh, responsibility of the chairman. I also want to say that the time that the side was announced, so when the press conference was called, oh dear, um, was was not a, a, a long time. I, I thought that uh, that could have been delayed a, a little bit. And I'm, I'm being I'm being very honest when when I look at the the practicality. Of, of, of doing what you got to do as chairman of selectors. The, the other thing I would like to point out about um, the announcement, um, initially there was no mention about hope. There was a mention of, of, of a holder. There was a mention of, um, of mayors. And, and uh, there, there was no comment on hope. And it's not until someone specifically asked um, whether... Um, uh, Hope was going to a white ball fran franchise. Uh, the uh, chairman of selectors, who by then, um, after maybe talking to, to Hope, I, w I, I would imagine, and it's not being un unrealistic to think that I'm wrong, that he would have known that Hope was heading um, to Bangladesh, and as we heard today, playing for the Tigers, and that starts on January the 19th. I thought Denny should have been a lot more open. He, he was, in fact, pressured into um, saying some more, and he ended up by saying, all I can say, hope is unavailable. <laughs> yeah, what was disappointing for me as well, and I know you have spoken about this in the past, and I must admit that it's, it's not the regular occurrence on the part of Cricket West Indies and their um, public relations and media team 
Um, I learned about the press conference at 5.43 Jamaica time, and it was starting at 5.45 Jamaica time. So, um, that well, I learned about it at 5.50, but the message came in at 5.43. Um, and, yeah, by the time I saw it, the press conference would have already started. But anyhow, Reds, let's leave all of that there. This is um, a, a, a topic and a squad that we will be chatting quite a lot about. Of course, they leave on the 30th of December. They will have a warm-up match from the 10th to the 13th. Um, of January and the first test against Australia begins on the 17th. Of course, it's West Indies cricket, so we wish the players all the very best because they have not selected themselves. So we really hope that they can go out there and give of their best. But yes, when you see things that don't necessarily add up, you have to ask the questions, and that's what we're here doing this afternoon. Thanks again, Rez. appreciate you and dropping you by, and we'll chat soon. Just a point I'd like to make. Holder and Hope uh, not being available to West Indies cricket is a bit of a, water, a watershed um, in, in West Indies cricket. Mm. Let's leave it there, Reds. Let's go to a break. Lance is at the track next. <laughs>